my pleasure to introduce and uh, welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Chiu Shen Wu. And Chiu Shen is an assistant professor of geography at the University of Tennessee. And his research interest is mainly about applying geospatial big data machine learning and cloud computing, mainly a Google Earth engine to study the environmental change, in particular hydrology and wetland uh, applications. So as a, an early career scientist, Chiu Shen is very uh, you know, productive. He has published over 40 uh, journal papers in a number of leading journals across different fields. Also, he serves as associate editor for the journals of uh, wetlands and also remote sensing. And besides his excellent research work, Chiu Shen is a very strong advocate of open science. And he puts a lot of efforts uh, you know, in developing open source software packages. And he not only shares with the community, but also teaches uh, people how to use them. So personally, I have known Chiu Shen for more than 10 years. And uh, we used to work in the same groups. And uh, I have to say he is uh, one of the most, you know, one of the best colleagues to work with. And Chiu Shen is always very open to share anything like new techniques and knowledge he learned. And he used to be our working, you know, uh, encyclopedia in our group. And well, he still is. Uh, so whenever we have technical issues with softwares and algorithms, you know, he, he can always help you to solve it. So if you are interested in using Google Earth Engine for your own research and work after this talk, I strongly recommend you guys to follow his blog, GitHub, and YouTube channels. And, you know, trust me, you will learn a lot and always keep up with the cutting edge of the field. So without further delay, let's welcome Dr. Chiu Shen Wu. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this webinar. And uh, thank you, Suje, for the uh, nice introduction. And um, I really appreciate uh, this opportunity to present my research today. And um, the title of my presentation is Using Google's Engine for uh, Interactive Mapping and Analysis of a Large Scale Geospatial Datasets. The slides of my presentation can be accessed by uh, scanning the QR code at the lower right corner, uh, or you can go to the URL uh, gshub.org slash PSU. I also put that one uh, in the chat box, so you're welcome to uh, check the PowerPoint slides and um, you can explore some of the hyperlinks and resources I uh, provide uh, for this talk. So, uh, Suzy already introduced, so I will briefly uh, introduce myself uh, before getting into the details of the, uh, the topic. And I got my PhD in geography uh, in 2015 from the University of Cincinnati. And then after that, I joined uh, Binghamton University uh, and I was a assistant professor there for four years. Last year, I just uh, relocated to the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. And currently I'm serving as associate editor for the journal uh, Wetlands and uh, Remote Sensing. And here are some of my uh, uh, academic profiles. Uh, you can uh, check my website and um, GitHub for more information about my research. As uh, Susie mentioned, I'm uh, committed to open science and reproducible uh, research. You can check out my GitHub uh, uh, account for some of the open source packages that I develop and also some other uh, tutorials and resources that I uh, put together. For today, uh, I'm going to focus on the package called GMAP, uh, but I also have other packages, for example, uh, Whitebox Python, Whitebox uh, R, and also Whitebox uh, ArcGIS. So you're welcome to check that. Uh, this one provides some uh, a wide range of uh, geospatial analysis tools, uh, over 400. So you can, you're welcome to check out these uh, resources if you're interested in uh, using uh, those. Okay, so here is the outline of my uh, presentation. So first, I'm going to briefly introduce uh, Earth Engine. Um, some of you, if you're not familiar with Earth Engine, um, this might be some, some information that uh, background for you to get started. And then I will move on to the uh, uh, GMAP package that I developed. And I will introduce some tutorials and some of the key features of this package. And later, I will also introduce uh, the Earth Engine QGS plugin. Uh, so if you're open, using open source uh, GS, you might also want to try this one. 
lastly, I will demonstrate some of the uh, applications, for example, using Earth engine for uh, wetland mapping and uh, also surface water dynamics. On the right here, I showed you an animation. So this is something you can create using the GMAP package um, without writing any live code. Uh, you can go to the, uh, the link here, a web app, click the link. You can also look at the source code, how this one was built. So basically, if you got interested in uh, landscape changes, uh, you can go to the URL, uh, to the web app, and then open and then just do a rectangle anywhere on um, Earth service. Then you can change the combination. You can also change the parameters. Uh, then you will be able to create an animation like this. So as you can see, this is from uh, the Landsat data archive from 1984 uh, up to uh, uh, this year. So you basically you can create any um, uh, cloud-free imagery and then to create this kind of animation very, very easily without writing any line of uh, code. So I'm, let me click this one. And keep that in mind because I'm hosting this on using a free web service. So when too many people are visiting the uh, app, the app uh, sometimes it might take time to load the application. But I can also show you what it looks like on my local computer. So if you see from this, right, and you don't see any source code in here, although I can show the source code behind um, how this application was built. But once it's deployed to the web, um, it's uh, very simple and easy. So for example, you can click the, the button on the upper left corner and then you can source any location. So for example, you just uh, type this one, right? And then once you zoom in, since this I've already created, but I'm just showing you like you can draw a rectangle anywhere. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can choose any location you like. And then you can change the title. So the title will be, will be the one showing here, uh, the lower, lower left corner. You can also change the band combination, right? For remote sensing, you know that you can use different spectral bands to composite uh, the imagery. And this is the speed, like how fast you want the uh, animation to, to show. You can customize the start year, end year. And if you're only interested in, for example, summer, you can also change the uh, start months and end months. And you can also change the color if you want. And once you are done, you just hit create time lapse. And then behind the scene, the program will go to Google's engine, uh, the entire length archive, and then to do the processing to com composite annual imagery. And at the end, we create the animation and add the animated text, something like that. Also at the end here, you can click the link here to download this one to a local computer. So, and then you can put this one on social media or on your website. So this is a good way that you uh, if you want to show the changes of the landscape. So for example, in this case, uh, this is the AOC. So you can see from 1984 uh, up to now, uh, geometric changes uh, of the surface water extent and very easy to do, no coding required. So you're welcome to um, explore uh, this package. Okay, so next, I'm gonna here show, show some examples, right? So the first one, you already saw this one. And also for example, mining in uh, 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 Canada. Right? and also coastal expansion in Dubai, uh, also river dynamics, um, anything you like. You will notice here using different bank combinations, but you can, everything you can customize. And also deforestation, right? And also boost fires for uh, urban expansion. So this is something you can easily get using uh, Google's engine and then um, without writing any line of a uh, code. So, uh, next, I'm going to briefly introduce Earth Engine uh, in case some of you have not used this before. But I would like to point out that Earth Engine is different from Google Earth. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with Google, uh, Google Earth. So Google Earth basically is a virtual globe that you can navigate to different locations. You can view the satellite imagery. You can also, for example, display uh, 3D buildings, but you cannot do any analysis. So as you go for, we might be wondering, for example, the landscape is changing, but we one might want to know, like quantify the, 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 the dynamics, how fast it is changing, what's the duration, what's the magnitude, uh, magnitude, what's the speed, right? Those things you cannot directly by visualizing the imagery on Google Earth. And this is where, if you want to do quantitative uh, spatial analysis, then you need to do some computation. And this is where Earth Engine can help you out. It's basically a computing engine behind Google Earth. And here I can give you a simple analogy, right? If you see from the, uh, here, Google Earth is just like image viewer 
on Windows system. You can use this one to view some photos, but you cannot do cropping, you cannot do mosaicing, you cannot do some like, for example, uh, fancy uh, uh, filter or effects. All the same is just like Photoshop. You can do all kinds of compu uh, complicated geospatial analysis. You can do mosaicing, you can remove cloud, uh, anything that you can think of. Uh, it's very, very powerful. And so this is just a simple analysis that might be easy for you to understand the differences between um, these two. And Google Earth Engine is free for resource education and non-profit uh, use. You are welcome to go to the uh, Google Earth Engine webpage and up right here, click sign up. Um, recommend that you sign up using your uh, EDU email. Uh, usually it's instant approval. But if you use Gmail, it might sometimes take a couple of days uh, because they need to verify. So. Uh, and once you sign up, uh, you can do all kinds of uh, uh, geospatial analysis. One very common one uh, is, for example, if you're do, uh, dealing with uh, optical remote sensing. Uh, most of the imagery, uh, the, one of the obstacles is cloud, right? So as you, you're probably aware that lens data, crack, uh, uh, satellites have been collecting data for several decades, since the 1970s. And not every image is perfect, right? You want to have a lot of clouds. So one quick application that you can use Earthing is to remove clouds. So I can show you, for example, this is before and this is after. So very simple, if you have a stack of time series images, you only need one light of a call uh, in Earth Engine to create something like this. So it's very, very powerful. Um, highly recommend that you uh, to try it out. And one of the uh, biggest advantages of Earth Engine is that it has a huge data catalog. As you can see from here, right now it has more than 30 petabyte of data. So one petabyte is 1,000 terabytes. So it's 30,000, more than 30,000 terabyte. And it's still growing. So it has uh, common satellite data, for example, from Landsat, Sentinel, MODIS, weather, climate, terrain, land cover, you name it. If it the data that you want um, are not available on, uh, in Earth Engine. You can upload data to your account, so you still you will be able to utilize the uh, powerful uh, computational uh, pow uh, computational power of Earth Engine. So, and if you uh, are already use Earth Engine, you might be familiar with this interface. So this is basically where you can write source code uh, and design algorithms to do the computation. So you have the map here to display the data and the result. Yeah, here in the center is so-called a call editor, basically where you can write source code. On the left side here is where you can source documentation, you can uh, save your scripts to uh, your account. On the right is where you, sometimes when you do query the data, you can return the result. You can also do plotting. So this is uh, about the JavaScript. And, and this is, so Earth Engine provide the JavaScript API, but they also provide the Python API. And the reason that uh, why I developed those packages is basically to enhance the Python API. And I can briefly, for example, the Earth, Earth Engine, the, the uh, capability can be categorized into two groups. The first group is doing computation. So the second group is doing visualization. So the JavaScript, as you can see from the early one here, you can do computation, you can also do visualization. But for the Python API, uh, mostly it is just for computation. It doesn't provide you a way to visualize the data. So, but Python is very easy uh, to learn and most of the uh, uh, users actually started using Python and um, Python also has a lot of open source packages that you can integrate uh, with Earth Engine data. You can also have a lot of uh, plotting options and, and also you can integrate with open source, also deep learning. But most of the uh, Earth Engine official documentation is written using JavaScript. So there are not uh, many uh, resources or tutorial of, available for the Python API. And this is why uh, kind of a motivation that I want to basically um, make it easier for people to use the Earth Engine uh, Python API. So you can see from here, a lot of options that we can uh, utilize. And this one basically is, uh, summarize uh, what I, want to achieve. If you see from this JavaScript API here, right, uh, in the center here, you can write script to computation. But this web crosses is the one that the, Java, uh, uh, the Python API does not provide. So my package actually implement this component. So at the end, you will be able to use the Python API 
easily just like the JavaScript API. And you can also integrate a lot of uh, open source packages together um, to do interactive mapping and analysis. So I hope you uh, uh, get the idea. So next, let's dive into um, the package. So the, the package is named um, GMAP. It's open source and hosted on GitHub. Um, you can check out my GitHub uh, uh, repo. And it's basically a, a package for interactive mapping with Earth Engine and also IPy Leaflet and also IPy Widgets. Uh, IPy Leaflet basically uh, is a package for you, that you can create interactive map. And the reason that I integrate this is because you can use Earth Engine for computation, but you cannot visualize the data. You can use IPy Leaflet for interactive mapping, but you cannot directly display the Earth Engine data. So there's kind of some kind of missing components in here. And this package is basically to build the connection between Earth Engine and IPy Leaflet, also some IPy widgets. Uh, I'm gonna show you uh, later. And so these are some of the key packages. Uh, I don't have time to go into detail, but just show you uh, Earth Engine API is the Python API for doing computation. This one is for doing mapping and also mapping. And this is going doing the plotting and also uh, how to convert the your final output into a website so anyone uh, can visualize, visualize the uh, products that you uh, uh, created. So it's a Python package. Uh, you can install using uh, pip or conda or github. Uh, you, I also provide tutorials here if you don't know how, how to get started and it's very simple and easy. So you can follow my tutorial. So next I will show you some simple example in here how you can get started. So you can run the packages in two um, environments. The first one is called uh, Google Collab. So this is would be good for teaching. So if you're teaching, for example, some geospatial courses that you want the student to use some uh, web mapping uh, technology, you, you might want to try this one. Um, is for Google Collab, you don't basically, just think about just like a Google document or Microsoft 365 online. You don't need to install anything on your computer. And then everyone can go to the user browser and then they can start writing stuff. So it's the same thing. It's just a, a online um, interactive uh, coding environment that you can start writing code without having to install anything on your computer. You can run it on uh, uh, any uh, tablet or laptop or desktop computers. And this was the example. I also provide some template in here. Uh, you see here, not many lines of code. Uh, on the right here is like Jupyter Notebook. So it's a Python uh, ID environment that you can install on your local computer. You can also run it on the server. So uh, again, these are very similar, but uh, I highly recommend that you use this one on the right uh, because it provides so-called uh, full interactive functionality. Um, the reason for this uh, is that when you are doing geospatial analysis, sometimes you want to query the data. For example, you click your mouse on a location, you want to get the data returned back to you. Then you will need to use this one. Uh, the Google Collect currently does not support IPy Leaflet. So I just want to um, let you aware. And I also published a, a short article uh, describing the package. If you're interested, you can uh, go to the link to check out the, uh, the paper. I also provide uh, uh, comprehensive, uh, comprehensive documentation for the package. So you can go to the link here uh, uh, above and uh, you can click to see how to get started, how to install. And also um, in the package, I pro provide hundreds of functions. So if you want to see the source code behind each function, uh, this is a good way that you can click the function and then to display the source code. So if you want to contribute this, to this package, um, this might be a good way that you can um, take a look at the source code and, and see how to uh, contribute. Next, I'm going to uh, briefly introduce some of the tutorials that I developed for this package. So um, you can go to my GitHub, uh, not GitHub, uh, YouTube channel. So, so far I have uh, uh, created 37 tutorials. So a total of about uh, more than nine hours. And today I don't have time to go into detail of every tutorial, but uh, you're welcome to check uh, uh, the tutorial and I'm still trying to make a tutorial every week. So uh, if you want to get update, you can subscribe to my channel. And here shows you a list of um, the tutorial that I have developed for this uh, package. Um, for each one, if you see from here, you, ha you have a full length video, usually it's 10, um, 15 to 20 minutes. And you also have a, a GF animation. So if you don't have time to watch the full video, you can watch the highlight, usually uh, 20, 30 seconds to get a highlight of what's uh, being provided in that tutorial. 
I also provide a notebook. So uh, my goal is to make it reproducible. So if you uh, are able to run the notebook, you will be able to exactly reproduce what I did for the tutorial. So um, you, all the resources are available um, through my GitHub account. So uh, 18, this one has another 18, so 36. I think 37 right now. I posted another one, I think, yesterday. So next, I'm going to demonstrate some of the key phrases um, just to see, to, to let you aware of what kind of features uh, is available in this package. And then you can maybe make the connection that you might be interested in this one in teaching or uh, in research. So the first one is automatic conversion between JavaScript and Python. If you already uh, learned some, uh, already know Earth Engine, uh, most likely you have been using the JavaScript, uh, but uh, in my package, I provide a quick way for you to quickly convert uh, JavaScript to Python. So you don't need to convert it one by yourself. You can just copy and paste uh, within the Jupyter Noble environment, and then you can run the source code quickly to um, convert to Python script, and then you can run to get results. You can also source data. So as I mentioned earlier, um, one of the biggest advantages um, of, of Google Earth Engine is the huge data catalog. So as you can see from here, you can just click the button and then you can search any data set uh, you want, you're interested in. And then you can just click to import and one, two lines of code. You can load the data into uh, the map and then you can do computation. So this is uh, game changing. In the past, like when you are doing remote sensing research, a um, couple of years ago before I used Earth Engine, Earth Engine I, I had to go to maybe NASA or USGS or NOAA different agencies trying to download the data. And sometimes the data you download is not like good quality. You need to filter the car, everything. So it's very, very inconvenient. Probably 70% or 80% of the time that you spend for your project is actually downloading and managing the data. Very few of the time actually is being used to develop algorithm. And, and, and so if you right now with Earth Engine, um, Basically, you can save a lot of time, but you don't need to download anything to a computer. Everything is right now in the cloud. All you need to do is to figure out, okay, well, I want this data, and then just tell us anything. Okay, please give me land set data, for example, for uh, Pennsylvania, and then for every, uh, I want it for every year, and I want the cloud coverage less than 10%. Few lines of code, you get the data, and then you can develop algorithm to uh, do all kind of computation. So highly recommend if you haven't used this before. You can also search the uh, API documentation. So um, there are thousands of uh, uh, functions within the Earth Engine API. There's no way that you can remember everything. So I also developed this to integrate within the Jupyter Notebook environment so that you can quickly search the documentation. And you can also import data from your personal account, right? If not, the data that you, over, uh, you want is not available within the Earth Engine, you can upload data to your account and then you can use uh, this one line of code to actually import the data uh, to uh, the map. You can all add a base map. So uh, this one is not available in the JavaScript API. So uh, there are thousands of, of uh, web services uh, available on the internet. You can easily bring in loads of base map uh, onto uh, uh, the iPad leaflet and you can use this to compare with Earth Engine data layers. So these are basically the web services. Uh, it's a convenient way that you can bring in data without having to download anything. So just like uh, base maps. You can also create split panel. And you can see from here, basically only one line of code. You can create something like this, uh, very simple. And this is just a demo, right? You can, you can use any data layers. This is just so you're using a Google base map. But if you uh, are doing like uh, landscape uh, or uh, change analysis, change detection, you can have before and after, and then you can uh, load the data layers and then you can use this one to compare. Uh, this is very um, common in the news articles or, or in the social media. You can also inspect, use the uh, inspector. So this is similar to, for example, ArcGIS, like the um, uh, identity. When you click your mouse, and then you will retrieve the data from those data layers and then display uh, those pixel values uh, for you. Uh, either it's raster or it can also be uh, vector data. You can also do interactive plotting. So for example, if you're interested in uh, looking at the spectral signature of the satellite data, okay, you just need to click no coding required. It's just load the data and then click your mouse and you can get this one. 
you can also export the data if you want. Uh, so this, this is a good way if you want to do some like random sampling or if you want to collect some sample data and then to do uh, supervised uh, classification. And you can also use this one so-called time series in inspector. So uh, only one lab call, you can do something like this and automatically load the data, for example, length set data for the past few decades. Uh, you don't need to go to download the data yourself. Uh, everything is already pre-processed for you to create the data. You can also access the net imagery, one meter resolution for the entire US uh, without having to download anything. And also you can load the local uh, uh, vector data. So again, Earth engine, everything happened in the cloud, but not all the data that you want are already in the cloud. So if you have some data on your local computer, you can use the package actually to load the data and then convert to cloud objects. And then you can use that to do computation with Earth engine data. Uh, very easy and sim uh, simple, only a few lines of uh, code. You can also load raster. So if you have local uh, image data, you can also integrate this one with Earth engine data and then you can load them together uh, on the same map so they can compare uh, different data sets. And you can also publish uh, your uh, products. So for example, after you um, create this uh, um, useful data products, you might want to release to the public. So the package also provides some function for you to quickly um, publish one to the web using just one line of code and then you can generate an URL and then you can send the URL to other people. So this is just like sim similar to um, Google document, right? Or, or, or anything that you just create an URL and people still be able to interactively visualize the data layers. Uh, very, very useful. And I think this is probably the last one. Uh, you can do some interactive app um, like the um, the web app that I showed you at the beginning, how to create those lane set time lapse. So basically you can write source code in a Jupyter Noble environment. And after you're done, you can convert that one to a standalone web application. And then you can put that one to uh, some like web server. Uh, it can be open source or you can use in commercial and then you can deploy the app. So anyone around the globe, they will be able to visualize uh, the application. Uh, they don't need to have an OS engine account. They don't need to know how to do coding, but they can still utilize the, the web application. So um, it's highly, highly recommended if you, for example, uh, if you write articles, if you want to uh, publish your results, you can also embed those things within your article. So later when people read, they can go to your website or your web application to visualize the data set interactively. So this is also very useful um, for uh, your project. Okay, I think that's pretty much about the, uh, the GMAP package and the, uh, I don't have time to show you every uh, features, but those are some things that um, the key features that you might be interested in. Again, um, all you need to do is just sign up on Earth Engine account, then you install the package and then you can um, get my like uh, notebook examples and then just one, you will be able to get the same results. Next, I'm gonna introduce uh, the Earth Engine QGS plugin. So if you are, uh, interested in open source um, rather than uh, a commercial, for example, ArcGIS. QGIS might be the most popular one uh, in, 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 in out there. So it's cross-platform. You can install on uh, Windows, Linux, or Mac uh, computers. And so the plugin here, uh, you can search the plugin uh, database and you should be able to find this one and then just simply install. You can also go to uh, the URL here at the bottom so this one is not developed by, by myself, it's by the Earth Engine community. So uh, very, very powerful. Basically, in the past, if you use a QGS, everything basically coming from your local computer, or you might be able to pull data from the internet, but the computational power is very limited. So if you can bring in the computational power of Earth Engine, and then you can use QGS actually to do the visualization, to display the results, and also provide the interactive uh, functionality. But the downside is that you need to install the software on the computer. So this is not um, available through the browser. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the GMAP package that I introduced earlier, you just need a browser. You don't need to install anything. So you can uh, launch a browser and then you can go to those uh, notebook examples or go to uh, Google Collect uh, to do interactive uh, computing. I also developed a uh, uh, QGS uh, Earth Engine examples, so it has more than 300 examples. 
uh, you're welcome to check out the repo. And then all you need to do is just download this one to your computer. And then you can load that one to uh, QGIS. And then you can quick hit one and then you can customize uh, or you can modify the source code to uh, your projects. So here shows you a quick demo, uh, how easy it is to do cloud computing uh, using Google's engine and QGIS. So once you download all the noble examples, uh, Q, uh, Python examples, and then you just load example and then just hit one and then you have the data. So for example, in this case here, this is like a, a, a DM for the entire, uh, the global DM, right? And then you just need a few lines of code and then you can execute and then you get the DM within your fingertips. And then you can do cropping or you can do all kinds of a, a terrain analysis using this data set without having to go online to download um, the data. So it's very, very powerful. You just need to figure out how to do that. So basically every data set in Earth Engine has a unique ID. It's just like a name of every person. And you just tell Earth Engine, okay, I want this data set and then assign to a variable. Okay, and then I want to, for example, I want to calculate slope, another line of code. I want to calculate expect, another line of code. You can do cropping, you can do all kinds of analysis, like traditionally how you do using, for example, MV or ODAS or uh, ArcGIS. So lastly, I want to uh, show you some um, applications, like how you can use Earth Engine for uh, doing large scale geospatial analysis. So for my research, I primarily focus on wetland mapping and surface water dynamics. So in this is, uh, uh, example, I'm just going to show you like what you can do with Earth Engine uh, for research. So this is uh, the kind of a, uh, related to an article I published in a remote sensing environment with my uh, co-authors. Uh, you're welcome to check out the article if you're interested in learning more about this. So basically, I'm trying to quantify the surface water dynamic using hybrid resource data. So this is, if you see from um, the data here, shows you the snapshot of uh, six time periods using the USDA net imagery. So National Agricultural Imagery Program, uh, one meter resolution. So it's very, very high resolution. And every two to three years, we have one national coverage. And I'm very interested in um, looking at the surface water, how the wetland uh, it's map, uh, it's changing. So if you look at, for example, here in 2009, right? So this is, a this is in the prairie pothole region. So it's millions of wetlands on the landscape. And as you can see here, these are all uh, 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 prairie wetlands. 2009 uh, was a relatively dry year. And you can see from the, my uh, cursor here, uh, my mouse, they are separated, right? So if you go from 2010, 2012, and now, for example, in 2014, uh, it's a very wet year. So those wetlands actually merge together and become a large, a larger wetland complex. So it's very, very dynamic. So it can be shrinking, it can be uh, expanding, and uh, how to actually use a remote sensing and, 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 and satellite data to quantify the dynamics is very important because we don't know, for example, the extent. Uh, we, although we have uh, national wetlands inventory for the entire US, but it's very outdated. So the data was developed in the night, most of those in, developed uh, by the US Fish and Wildlife Service in the 1980s. Um, it hasn't been up, it, it's, some of the states are updating the data, but most of the data in the, in the database is very outdated. So this provide a quick way that, okay, we have the data, but what can we do with the data? In the past, uh, the, because the data is huge, uh, there's a lot of computational uh, requirement and it's just not possible to do large scale. The data has been sitting there for, for many years. And right now with Earth Engine, finally, we, we are able to actually to utilize the data to do some uh, geospatial analysis. So just let you know, Earth Engine has the entire data catalog of this one meter resolution data for the entire US. And it's many, many terabytes of data. And so what I did in this article is to utilize this data and uh, together with some other, for example, LIDAR and, and, and other imagery to do some auto automatic mapping. So you don't need any human intervention. Everything is automatic. So to extract the water. And I would like to point out that if you look at the imagery in here, uh, these are all water surveys, right? But you might notice like some water uh, surveys, uh, dark color, some might be green color. And some you might, for example, here, you might have some uh, wave or, or uh, suspended sediment. So the color is very different. And how can we actually automate the algorithm to extract the water and then to, to do the, uh, to analyze the dynamics is very important. 
So this show you the input data. And this one just show you here the quick results. So for example, we have multiple time periods. This one just shows you one time snap. So on the left side, right, 2015. So you might see this one here, the, uh, the yellow, uh, the boundary. This is how you can automate extract um, the surface water extent uh, using OS engine and, and also some other uh, data sets, but it's much, much better. And you, you can also see this one here, so-called occurrences, right? So earlier I show you uh, six time periods, right? So one pixel, uh, what each location, it might be detected as water uh, multiple times. For example, if the, it is detected as water six times within the six images, that means it's always water. If they only maybe one or twice, that means it's more like a seasonal or temporary water. So this one on the right here shows you the dynamics. So one to six, for example, six, that means that location is detected as water in all those six time periods. If it is only one, that means only detected only one. So you can see this, um, the uh, temporal dynamics, dynamics of the wetland, right? So you will see here from the ages, right? Only a couple of times detected as uh, water and then Again, permanent water or semi-permanent water. So this gives you a quick way that you can get the dynamics. So compared to the National Wetlands Inventory, it's only one time period and it was developed in the 1980s, right? So now you can use this to quickly update or provide some more updated information about um, the landscape. And lastly, I wanted to show you the differences in here. So the lab here, this one is developed using Lancet data, 30 meter resolution. So it's so-called the JRC uh, Joint Research Center by the European uh, uh, Commission uh, and using 30, uh, 30 meter Lancet data. So you can see the differences, right? You will see here because these wetlands are relatively small. Most of those are within a small, the median size is smaller than 2,000 square meters. So it's less than two lengths, roughly two Lancet pixel size is the median size. So if you use Lancet data, it, it, it just cannot really uh, detect those smaller ones. So here shows you the, uh, the red arrow here shows you some of those small wetlands because the smaller wetlands tend to be more dynamic. So it, it's changing much more quickly compared to large water bodies. And you will see here Lancet actually could not detect those. And this is differences between using high resolution uh, area imagery and um, medium resolution uh, Lancet data. So this is using Lancet. Again, on the right here is the NWI, National Wetlands Inventory. So we see here the boundary, right? And you see the water body be, uh, beneath. Right now, you will probably notice that the water body has expanded much, much larger compared to the data set that was developed in the 1980s. Um, uh, so clearly, um, you can use Earth Engine data to quickly process the data, and then you can scale up. Okay, so Earth Engine, the, the one of the things that it's very powerful is that location doesn't really matter. The more important is your algorithm, your resource design, your methodology. And because the data basically can scale up, you can move to any location as long as you have the data. So this is why it, uh, Earth Engine has powered up so many large scale studies globally or continental scale studies, surface water or forest uh, uh, chains or, or uh, anything that you can think of. Uh, and lastly, this is some of the uh, Earth Engine application. Uh, you can see from um, this one here, you can go to the link that I provided. So this is basically Earth Engine, app, like I mentioned earlier. After you uh, uh, develop the product, you want people to be able to access your data, access your maps, rather than update your data, upload, upload your data to some uh, data repository. It's static, but if you use Earth Engine, everything is dynamic. So when, you, and the computation is on, on the fly. So is it also engine does not store your results. Everything basically is just the data. So when you launch the application, when people click, for example, I want to extract water for this uh, water set, you click and then you run the computation. So basically it has more than I think 65,000 uh, servers. So when you click, it send to those servers and then you do the computation and then send the results back to you. And everything is basically much instant, uh, very, very powerful. You can also do, for example, uh, simple proteins, and then you can export the data um, to your local computer to do full analysis if you, if you want. So highly recommend you can uh, take a look at, this is just some ideas, it's not like uh, uh, everything. 
And lastly, I also have some other, for example, uh, uh, apps uh, they develop using OS engine. Uh, you're welcome to explore. Let me see. You have time. Uh, let me just show you uh, what it looks like. So, for example, I can show you this is the uh, net imagery, one meter resolution uh, data. Uh, you don't have to download anything. And if you see from here, you can select a different year for any location around the US. And so this is the uh, location in North Dakota, the uh, prairie uh, four holes. And you can, have, like I said earlier, you can have a, a, a slider on the left, on the right, and then you can visualize. So in this case, right, if you see from this, like for example, for this one, right, connected. And this is on the left side, it's uh, disconnected when it's dry and wet. And you can change to for different year. So this is just the data set. Um, it does not do any computation, but like I mentioned, uh, what you want to do depends on your algorithm. So you can design the algorithm and you can run the computation, uh, everything um, in the cloud without having to download any data set. Lastly, I would like to provide some additional resources. So if you think this might be useful for your research or for your teaching, um, I also provide another repo with uh, 360 Jupyter Notebook examples. You can go to my repo and you can download and enter one on your computer. You can also directly click the um, link and you can launch using Google Colab. Uh, so you don't have to actually install anything on your computer. You can also go to my GMM uh, GitHub repo uh, to submit any feature requests. I also welcome your contribution. If you are um, comfortable with uh, uh, programming, uh, you can add some additional features to the package that uh, is not available right now. You're also welcome to join the uh, GMAP uh, Slack channel that I've just created a, a couple of days ago. So if you want some live discussion uh, with me, uh, you can join the Slack channel. You can also uh, leave comments on my blog or my YouTube channel, or you can uh, DM me uh, through Twitter. Okay, so that's all for my uh, presentation. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Um, I will be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, thank you, Chiu Shen. Uh, it's very impressive that you, you know, work out more than 300 examples and make it public and add, let anybody can you know, explore. So uh, you guys can just type in your questions, you know, in QA or you can, I think, raise your hand and uh, ask a question. Now I have one question uh, from uh, Wei Ming Hu. And uh, can I overlay my own map on top of the GE map? Is the reprojection supported? Uh, so basically the package depends on the IPI leaflet. So IPI leaflet actually provides some uh, functionality for you to actually to reproject, but uh, it's not very recommended because most of the Earth engine data, when you pull the data from Earth engine, it's using the uh, uh, WGS uh, 84. So you can you can do, but it's not very commonly used. You can certainly reproject the data if you if needed. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I actually have a question. I yeah. I'm really curious, like. You know, you are very productive in terms, you know, writing papers. You're also a very excellent teacher. And also, I know, according to my knowledge, you also do a lot of service to the department. I mean, also, you are, you know, put a lot of things to YouTube and also like GitHub. Like, how, 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 how did you do, how do you do the time management? I mean, it's really tremendous. Uh, that's a good question. So, most of the time, uh, I'm sitting in front of the computer and uh, it was very, the past year was very challenging because my son was just born uh, in January. So only seven or eight months off. And uh, so during the daytime, uh, it's very limited, but after he, he he's uh, asleep, then I can walk at night and try to get things done uh, quickly. Uh, also I'm doing teaching. So uh, during the last semester, Actually, the package that I developed, the GMAP, was originally developed for my students uh, when I was teaching uh, undergraduate uh, course spatial data management. So I, I, I taught students how to use Earth Engine. But like I mentioned, I use Python, but it's not very intuitive because the student can do computation, but you cannot actually visualize the results. And that's why I developed the package. And then 
I release to GitHub. It looks like the community like it, uh, and, and, and so that's why I, I continue to improve and adding tutorials and also new features to the package. And based on the feedback, I always try to improve and try to get um, more features out there. So people, basically my goal is to make it more accessible. So OS engine is free. It's, it's a fantastic uh, geospatial analysis tools. And um, I want more people to utilize uh, this. Uh, it will just make your research or your life much easier. Uh, and my goal is to simplify the process so that you don't have to write many lines of code to do stuff. Uh, you just call one function and then behind the scene, then the package can do things for you to simplify the source code. So more accessible and, and anyone actually can get started uh, right now um, easily. Compared to two years ago when I first got started, uh, it was very difficult to, the learning curve is, is very steep, but now it's much easier uh, with all the packages and resources available on uh, GitHub. Okay, we have more questions coming up. Uh, if I draw a polygon with a GE map toolbar, is there a function to get this polygon from the map? Yes, you so uh, um, you, you can check out my uh, tutorial. There's one tutorial for you specifically how to use the drawing tools. So keep in mind, everything Google is in the, in the cloud. So everything you draw using the browser actually is so-called client, uh, client object and the server object. So my package has some function for you when you draw the object, it will convert that one to the cloud and then can use that one to do analysis. So I, I, let me, let me show, uh, see which, which one I can quickly show you. I also have tutorial. So if you want to watch the tutorial, uh, you can also uh, do that. So let me show you in here. So if you go to my repo and then go to uh, examples. So here shows you some of the animations for, for everyone. So the one that you mentioned is uh, here, number five, using the drawing tool. So this one shows you how you can do computation using the drawing tool. You can draw only polygon or any uh, uh, rectangle and then to use that to intersect uh, with the Earth engine data and then you can do computation. Okay. Um... Next question is about QGIS GE plugin, I think. Mm -hmm. um, uh, today I was trying to show it in the class, but none of the students was able to install it properly. I would say that the problem was logging window didn't uh, appear. Oh, I see. Do you know how to solve this? Yeah, that's uh, a kind of a, a tough question. So if you are using just your local computer, it's actually very easy to do. But if you're in the lab environment, sometimes if you don't have the admin right, uh, when you install, already, might you already, already have the QGIS, but when you install the plugin, it might not go to the admin uh, location. So sometimes there's some issues to authenticate those engine. So certainly it's a bit challenging uh, if you're in the teaching environment. I would recommend that you use Google Collab. So basically everyone has an account and then just use the Google Collab and then you can do computation. So in that way, student, don't have to install anything on your computer. You just go to their Gmail account and then they can launch. Uh, so let me, I'm not sure if you, if you go to, for example, my uh, GitHub and then go to, for example, for the first one, Earth Engine Python Notebooks. So in here, uh, you can, uh, if you scroll down here, I have a, all the documentation for each tutorial, like what you, uh, noble example. So in this case, so I can click any local, any example, for example, image visualization. So you just click the notebook and then it will take some time to display the notebook. So here has the icon here, run in Google Collab. All you need to do is just click. So every notebook has this icon. And then once you click, it will launch in the Google Collab. And then from here, you should be able to run uh, through the source code. And then you can hit one all at once, or you can run one by one. So this is a good way, uh, good for students. That there's no obstacle to install the package or, or others. So you might want to try this one. And then later, once the student are familiar with uh, Earth Engine API, then you can gradually encourage them to install QGIS on a local computer and also install the QGIS plugin uh, if they want to. 
Okay, uh, next question is, is it possible to add our own data, say vector point data to Earth engine, and then conduct analysis with their provided data? Yes, so uh, earlier I also mentioned that one. So let me go back to uh, this example in here. So for all data, you can do vector data, you can do raster data. And if you check out my tutorial number 10, using swap files with Earth Engine without having to upload data to your Earth Engine account. So if you see from here, right, you have, have data on your local computer and then you can load the data. It will automatically convert the data to Earth Engine object. And then you can use this one to do computation. So you can check out my uh, tutorial. It also has a video. So uh, if you need more information, like only a few lines of code, you can do this. Once you do the computation, you can also export the data back to your local computer. So once you are done with the computation. Okay, I, I guess Chusha has, you know, a lot of examples. You, if you want to know more, just dive into uh, his uh, GitHub. Also, um, uh, like, uh, this is all fantastic. Thank you for supporting QGIS and making the Python interface for Earth Engine. I'm really excited to start using these tools. I use many of the items you discussed, Python, a lot of R. Do you have any suggestions regarding a good place resources to get started with Jupyter Notebook? Oh, Jupyter Notebook. So uh, I think the, the best way is to use the one that I saw earlier, use Colab. So once you're familiar with Colab, then later you can install Jupyter uh, on your local computer. If you uh, if you're comfortable, you can go to my tutorial. So from the first one in here, introducing the package, how you install using, uh, how to install uh, Anaconda and then how to uh, get started. So you can check out my uh, YouTube channel. So the first one here, Earth Engine uh, Tutorials. So if you click this one, uh, click this one in here, uh, it has um, 36 tutorials right now. So you can watch from the very beginning. The beginning teach you how to install the package and how to get started, how to launch to be the notebook. So, uh, Jupyter Notebook is very, once you set up the environment, it's very easy to get started, so uh, it's simple. And once you uh, watch the first tutorial, you can get my notebook and then just open the notebook and then you can run uh, block by block to uh, execute the, uh, the source code. So okay, everything is, uh, let me sh maybe show you one more um, items. So if you go to my examples and then click the notebooks folder, so if you see from the list in here, from the one all the way to 37. So these are every notebook that are associated with the uh, uh, YouTube uh, video. So you can, you, can down, you can download the entire repo or you can just download one by one. And you can take a look at the, um, the source code. Everything is reproducible. So uh, should be able to, you should be able to do that, uh, follow my tutorial and then do that uh, on your own computer. Yeah, I guess the best answer is just to go to Chosen's GitHub and YouTube and start to learn. Should mm -hmm. we? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, we have one more. Can uh, GE map visualize map generally generated locally without me uploading them to Google Earth Engine? Sometimes I run Jupyter Notebook or supercomputers, and the data are all supercomputers. It is sometimes hard to upload those data to GEE. Yeah, that, that's a good point. So that's something that, uh, so if you're dealing with data right now, not available in the data catalog, you can upload, but if you, if you already have a huge data set, then it might be very challenging. So one way that right now, some of the new features of Earth Engine is that it will allow you to load so-called uh, cloud optimized GOT. So basically, if you already have some imagery stored in the cloud, if they support the uh, cloud optimized uh, uh, GeoTIFF, then you can directly use Earth Engine to load data from the cloud. So you don't have to actually have to upload the data to um, Earth Engine. So, but that one only support cloud optimized GeoTIFF. It's different from the GeoTIFF that we use traditionally. So if you're interested in um, learning that one, the f that feature is coming out uh, in, I think sometime next month. So you can definitely, I might make some tutorial about this so you can maybe watch out for my YouTube channel. So I might release a new tutorial when the new feature is available. Okay, great. Um, okay, we have another one. 
Uh, thank you for this talk and all of the resources you are developing. You mentioned mm -hmm. exporting a map to a website. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, is the resulting website still hosted for free? Is it through Google? No. So uh, different ways you can, uh, if you use Zubit and you can export that one. You can, uh, let me show you in here. Um, there are a couple of ways you can do that. So one easy way, if you just want the map uh, to be interactive, you can you use the map dot publish. I think it's number number twenty four here. How to publish interactive uh, OS engine map? Again, you can watch the tutorial. You can also uh, host your map on your local computer. You can also host that one on the cloud. So if you go to this one I showed you earlier, this web app, this one is hosting in the cloud a free web service. So it's free and you can host it if you on the cloud if you want. You can also host it on a local computer. So and then to generate on URL or they can send to um, other people. Uh, let me tell me here. So here number uh, number twenty-six, number twenty-seven and twenty-eight. So those two three tutorials covers how to publish on web app to be embedded, for example, in Twitter and how to publish to using free web uh, hosting service and how to use a local computer. So there are three ways you can do that. Um, you can check out the, uh, the tutorials. Okay, great. I guess Choshan's uh, GitHub basically answered all the questions like people can maybe have. So just go to his uh, GitHub and uh, start to practice with his Jupyter notebooks. Okay, for now we don't have uh, questions Okay, great. Um, I think almost time. Okay, th thank you again, Chosen. This is really amazing. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we, we all know that it's not easy to commit to open source, open science, and especially, you know, develop so, take so many time and develop those tutorials and share with the community. I re we really, you know, appreciate your effort of pushing this. Uh, this is also very, like, important direction for us in the future, you know, do research in more open science uh, style. And uh, uh, thanks to everyone for attending this seminar. And we get a lot, lot of attendees and also a lot of uh, questions get gets people really interested in using Google Earth Engine for their own research and work. Mm -hmm. And uh, lastly, uh, we would like to uh, you know, uh, give a virtual, virtually gift to children our department uh, coffee mug. That's kind of our 